Ну что ж, что мы? Let me finish chewing up my popcorn. Okay, that's cool. Don't apologize to me, apologize to them. Yeah, whatever. It's delicious <laughs> popcorn, man. Will it look like that good caramel corn? Yeah, there's some upstairs <clears> if you want it. <throat> Maybe. That stuff's like crack. I gotta be careful. Do you do a lot of that too? No, no, I can't afford that. Are you kidding oh, okay. me? <laughs> All right. Hope I'm, down, you don't. I'm down to one job right now. <laughs> oh, okay. <clears throat> All right, well, uh, do you think our uh, listeners are ready to hear uh, the next part you of made the me UA saga? In, yeah, you made me wait an entire week, too, to do this. What the hell, dude? <laughs> I want to hear more. Let's go. Come on. It's time to hit the trail. Lock in those hubs and throw it into low range. Because you are listening to Wheel It with Keith and Johnny Orange. Broadcasting from the Thin Line Off-Road Studio. They're here to talk about 4x4s, trucks, and everything to do with enjoying the great outdoors. Buckle up. Here's your hosts, Keith and Johnny Orange. And then we made him wait the intro, too. Man, we're bastards. Yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> um... <clears throat> So, anywho, day two came to a close. Y'all sitting by bonfires in a lake in the moonlight. We were. It was very beautiful. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so like I said, we were, you know, if you're listening to this or if you've already listened to the other episode, uh, kind of a little recap there. We had finished up uh, at Crothers Lake. Uh, I believe it was a man made lake. Uh, we were up there uh, in the Rockies or the Rocky Range area mm-hmm. or Montana. And it was. We had ended up uh, having to go to a different camping area, but it turned out to be quite beautiful because a movie was being filmed, a mm. horror movie. Well, we go to leave in the morning, and I didn't see this, but apparently uh, a number of the other people did. Uh, the movie people decided to play a prank on us. <laughs> or I love it. if they didn't play a prank <clears throat> on us, then somewhere up there uh, was a... Um, Someone who got killed because oh. uh, apparently there was a lady laying there face down next to the trail with a knife in her back. And hmm. um, so we're hoping that had something to do with the movie. If not, and there's a body up in Carruthers Lake, I can tell you none of the people on UA know anything about it. So <laughs> uh, it was. Uh, okay then. Yeah. yeah it was a little, um, but I didn't see it. I heard about <laughs> it after on. Uh, you know, and people said that they were wrong. You know, I wrote a witness statement like that once. I was, I did not see the event occur, but I heard this is what happened. Gotcha. <laughs> so yeah. uh, that that day, um, we, uh, you know, we took we took off and you know did some. We actually wheeled back down the mountain. Nice. And because uh, Chad had wheeled up the mountain that day. He said, "Hey, why don't you come down?" So I nice. I had done all the rock crawling on the way down and nice. did some river crossings and stuff like that, and uh, we ended up uh, doing some more dirt trails and going along, and we eventually ended up in the abandoned mining town of Comet, Montana. Nice. Uh, I love ghost towns, man. Yeah, I love I've, love ghost towns. I've been through like mostly closed up ones, but not like a true straight up ghost town. I mostly so closed bad. up. So like you've been through open ghost towns. Well, like, like Detroit? two, three, well, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Similar in comparison. A couple of buildings open, like one in every block. There's one storefront still, but everything else is closed up kind of thing. Gotcha. Nothing that's like truly abandoned. Oh, this this one is not not <clears throat> only abandoned, but it is uh, for sale. I, did, Ooh, really? I did not check the price, but you could buy the entire town. Really? Yeah, that's it's for sale. Yeah, Comet, Montana. <laughs> hmm. And they had... Uh, all sorts of buildings and uh, an old mill and a uh, mine and all sorts of stuff that was nice houses. It was just super cool. So we ended yeah. up wandering around in Comet for the better part of maybe an hour or so and taking a bunch of pictures and just kind of exploring now because it is private property. We, mm. we did not enter any of the buildings. We just kind of walked around and we'd look through the windows and stuff That's like cool. that. Which uh, I'm hoping we had permission to do. Nobody seemed to mind. Uh, the, we noticed it was like one operating house slash farm right in the edge of town. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they were like the caretakers for it or what, but yeah, uh, it, it was definitely definitely cool. And at that point, they 
had really started to do some of the drone footage too. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they were doing a lot of uh, drone filming, and they they ended up getting the the drone up in the air, and uh, you know a lot of comment. They got some really really cool photos. It was just nice. it was a neat place to be. Um, and then we left Comet, and we did some more dirt trails and stuff like that. And at this point, I think it's fair to mention that. About the first five days of UA, we did not see the sun. <laughs> uh, so it was all nighttime stuff then, eh? No. Uh, the wildfires out west were so bad uh... that every direction you looked, no matter how high up you were, if you looked all the way around you, all of the horizons were just smoke. Jeez. Which means we were standing in it, too. Jeez. Everybody was getting dry coughs. <coughs> everybody like Spain. yours. <laughs> Um, it's not Rona, I promise. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, everybody was getting dry coughs. It was just a, a, a crazy thing. It was, uh, you know, all around us, we just, um, you know, it just smoke. And it was mm-hmm. choking out the sun. So it was just gray. But even then, it was still bright outside, and it was beautiful. So we just... That's cool. You know, we continued. And as we're doing these trails, and just dust, 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 dust. It hadn't rained out there in a while. So we've got our, you know, I call Rona rags on our face. We've got our little masks on. <laughs> I've got the, the handkerchief around my face, not because of the coronavirus, because of the dust. And yeah. still getting my nostrils, my ears, and everything full of it. Everybody else, same way. Oh, yeah. We're doing these dusty trails. I really felt bad for the open top rig guys. <laughs> like, yeah. Like uh, Sam Gillis and stuff. I mean, he just, his was just. It just Jeez. pour it everything into his rig. Was that your one live video? Uh, I don't remember what was going on, but it's something you, you said something to Ian, and he shook his jacket and all the dust. One of and those dirt days, yeah. Up. Ian he, was. He looked so pissed off. That he was. was so he was in a uh, like, open yeah, top yeah, rig as well. And yeah, yeah. It was pretty bad, man. It is. So we uh, we kept going along, and uh, we eventually we kind of come around this corner, and uh, we're at the side of a mountain. And what we're looking at, we're like, okay, what's going on here? There's this old abandoned, I'm going to say late 1800s, maybe early 1900s, steam train tunnel. Cool. Going Now, originally, this tunnel was called, I guess, Wicks Tunnel, but they call it the Boulder Tunnel now, or maybe mm-hmm. vice versa. But in any case, it's owned both sides. It's a mile long. Wow. It's abandoned. And private property on both sides. Hmm. Uh, Motor Trend was able to get a permission for us to go through the tunnel. Cool. With the rigs. Now, the water had flooded in this tunnel. Yeah. So it was as deep as two feet in some spots. And on top of that, and there's no lights in there. Yeah. On top of that, some of the railroad ties were broken around, Hmm. floating, uh, you know, nails. Pretty crazy. And just pitch dark. Yeah. So we got to wheel through the tunnel for a mile underground. That is awesome. Get to the other side, and you can hear all the the mufflers, you know, the echo through there. Yeah. We get through, get to the other side, and they're like, hey, everybody, enjoy that? We're like, yeah. It's like, all right, you can do it one more time because (laughs) we got to head back out that way. So nice. We turned around, and we ended up going back out. And that time, Chad and I swapped driving duties, and I took the top off the front of the Jeep, the two T tops they have in the front of them now. And stood up a couple times, tried to take some pictures. Nice. Uh, pretty hard to get pictures in a dark tunnel. Yeah, but, I, I would agree with that. But that was that was honestly one of my favorite things on the entire trip. We just that sounds awesome. It was it was so so cool going through that tunnel. Uh, I posted video and pictures to my personal Facebook page, Keith Codet, K E I T H K O D E T. They're public albums, uh, UA 2020. Nice. You can go ahead and, you know, any listeners, you want to go in there and check it out, you can share it, like it, whatever you'd like. I'll put some of it on the Wheeling page. But, uh, you know, go ahead and check it out. It was it was super, super cool time. Um, I am no photographer, but I did my best. A uh, lot of photos, a lot of videos in there. Uh, check that all out. But, uh, so, yeah, so after that, we, uh, if memory serves me correct, we kind of, like, did a high elevation um you know, kind of like dirt road going up along the ridges of mountains. And a lot mm-hmm. of times we were above the power lines. Nice. And so much dust in the air that uh, Chad and I, uh, we only had intermittent radio service. Uh, the radio didn't work in the Jeep, but we huh. had a Bluetooth speaker and mm-hmm. our phones. So as long as we had a signal, 
Well, we ended up taking and playing like a soundtrack to the old uh, movie uh, Twister. <laughs> because it seemed like that. We had this just line of awesome vehicles and vans and everything going along and just dust up in the air. That is awesome. Yeah, it was it was something else. So we're going along playing, you know, Humans Being by Van Halen and mm-hmm. you know, doing 30 40 minutes of just dusty dusty roads and Nice. It was, it was pretty crazy. And so, you know, that was the rest of our day until we got to where we were supposed to camp for the night. And I don't know what campground it was, but we were supposed to pull into this campground. So we get down this road. We're in Montana, rural Montana, middle of absolutely nowhere. Most of UA was in Montana. Yeah. Um, now we can tell people that. Of course, they most uh, you couldn't tell people were yeah. there. The pictures I posted there, they said we could post pictures daily <clears throat> mm-hmm. and things, but they just didn't want us to give away locations yeah. until after we had left an area. Yeah, naturally. So, uh, you know, we're going along and... We're up there in Montana, and we're, we're just having a good old time. But so we, we go down this road, and the smoke was getting pretty bad where we were going. And we finally we pull up, and there's a Forest Service truck parked across the road. And um, Christian and Trent, they get out of their rigs. They're up in the front. And I think it was Christian, actually. Christian Hazel, like, hey, what's going on, man? And uh, the guy's like, well, uh, the campground that you want to go to is on fire. So <laughs> you're not going to stay there. So, once again, Onyx Off-Road to the rescue. Uh, they looked at the map, local kind of camping areas. Rescue on this one is going to be loosely based because <laughs> my least favorite campsite of the trip. Uh, so, they finally find the spot. It's kind of in a gully between two mountains. Mm-hmm. Get down in there. It's super, super cold. Yeah. little stream going through there, but it's a cow pasture. Ooh. And everywhere we went, by the way, in Montana, there was cows. Up in the mountains, cows. Down in the valleys, cows. <laughs> side of the mountains, cows. Well, a bunch of them been down in there, and you could not move four feet without hitting a cow patty. Aww. Now, most of them were dried, so you, yeah. so you could, like, kick them out of the way. Yeah. But. Still nasty. <laughs> it, it is what it is. <clears throat> yeah. So we end up putting up the tents, and we couldn't make fires there either. They did because of the fires going oh, in the air. Oh yeah. No, we did the first night, but we couldn't that night. Yeah. Um. So we we're like, all right, you know. So everybody just kind of like eats Cliff bars and granola bars and whatever junk they had. And a couple mm-hmm. people had like little camp stoves they had on the mm-hmm. back of their tailgates, and so everybody went to bed pretty, uh, um, pretty quickly. We just. That was the out. yeah. That was the end of it, and didn't sleep very well because how cold it was. But yep, been there. It it uh, you know we still did that. It was still an adventure, and that yeah. was what this is about. It's ultimate adventure. Absolutely, ultimate Absolutely. adventure. So that was that was kind of fun uh, being out there in the uh, in the cow pasture. Uh, next day we woke up. You know we had uh, this day four now. We're covered in dew. Uh, we are dew or doo doo. A little bit of both. A little bit of both. Actually, I'm sorry, that was horrible. Actually, uh, going back on that previous day, we're going down this trail where there was a bunch of cows, and uh, Chad just says to me, he's like, "Hey, he's like," and it was really dusty, and he he got a kick on how like some of these dusty roads that we we're on that we're doing like 40 miles an hour on, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Hey, try to get a video." So I'm I've got my arm out the window, mm-hmm. and I'm trying to video. And it's turning out pretty cool. And then all of a sudden, I feel something wet on my arm. He had hit a cow patty, and it splattered up onto my arm, right onto where my stitches are. Oh, not good. No, I know. So I went, and I I grabbed some baby wipes and stuff and cleaned up as good as I could. Uh, I'm not freaking out, but, you know, it's just dirty, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm cleaning it all up. And then I'm looking at it, and Chad's looking at my arm, and he goes, man, he goes, you got to get those stitches out. Now, supposedly they're supposed to be self-dissolving stitches. Oh, bullshit. Those are not self-dissolving. Yeah, they'd already been in for, well, two weeks at this point almost, yeah. and and they're starting to itch and burn yep. bad and stuff. And yep. I'm like, so I pulled out a razor knife, and I just cut them out and pulled yeah. them out there on the side of the trail. Yeah, and done that. I'm sure the doctor would love that, but, you know, ah. it is what it is. But, uh, so... Uh, after that, uh, you know, like I said, we, we took off uh, day four, and uh, we started doing what was called the McKelvey Lake Trail, okay. and that was kind of a winding switchback of a trail. It was the first time we were getting like, well, not the first time we got serious elevation, but it was one of the first times where we had these just sheer drop-offs. Hmm. Um, now, I'm not talking 90 degrees, but I'm talking enough where, you know, 
You don't want to roll down that. Well, maybe yeah, maybe a seventy <clears throat> degrees or something. Oof. If you if you lost the side of the trail, your rig is not going to stop for five, six, seven hundred feet. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. And so we're going along those, and of course they're they're on the radios. They're you know, hey, everybody, be very careful. Yeah. This and that. And fortunately, we had no problems. Everybody's well, that's good. good. Uh, we finally climbed up to about 9,000 feet of elevation Jeez. up in the Rockies. And uh, we get up to this area, which was a couple more lakes up there, or one big lake, just gorgeous. I mean, crystal clear water. Nice. And I found one of the most magical things I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. I had needed to use the restroom number two okay. all day long. And I do not like pooping in the woods. I agree. I will do it if I have to. Yeah. But so we're up there and we get all the way up to this the end of this trail, middle of nowhere, and I grab a thing of toilet paper and I wander off into the woods. Mm-hmm. And while well, everybody else is taking photos and doing some fly fishing and stuff in the lake. Mm-hmm. And I found a toilet in <laughs> the woods. And I'm not talking a porta potty, I'm just talking a toilet on a stand. This is woods. awesome. And I'm like, this is the most majestic toilet I've ever <laughs> used in my life. But I'm sitting on this thing, and you know, and I'm doing my business, and I keep hearing... Uh-oh. Uh, and I'm like... And I look up, well, the drone... <laughs> he keeps doing flybys of like the f- kind of field area I'm in, and I'm yeah. just like, hey... So I'm hoping I don't end up on TV <laughs> on the can because... Uh, oh, I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, uh, why? <laughs> Just this beautiful, majestic set of woods uh-huh. and then a dude on a crapper. <laughs> well, I, I'm hoping that they at least catch it. Like, they don't go and do, like, these panning shots and no one notices that, like, off in the corner, like, there's a little blip. <laughs> That's and there's what a I'm dude. hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah that was that oh was, that's awesome that was pretty wild was it like mounted to like a tank and everything or was this just some randomly placed toilet in the woods uh it was just a randomly placed toilet on a plywood box so it was like quote-unquote plumbed then yeah i guess so that's awesome yeah. <laughs> that is awesome and then you know i go down and i show chad i'm all like secretive about it Hey man, look what I found! And, you know, I'm showing him my camera, you know, because I took a picture of the toilet. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden, I hear somebody yell, "Oh my God, there's a toilet up here!" And then, of course, we had two <laughs> women on the trip, uh, yeah. mostly men, but two women, and they just ran up there, and everybody's <laughs> like, "I was like, oh man, my secret, damn." But uh, <laughs> you know, uh, that was uh, that, that was pretty wild being up there and uh, seeing all that, and then um, you know, we, uh, you know, I, I'm looking at my notes here and. I may have misspoken before. That might have been the day that the horror movie people were, but it doesn't matter. It all runs together. I'm yeah. telling you parts of the trip. But uh, when we were up there on the McAlvey Lake Trail, some people saw a moose. I did not <laughs> see it. I've seen moose in the wild. Um, I have not yet seen one of them. They're they're pretty massive cr- critters, but I've that was that. pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, you know, it was it was something else. You know, and then we uh, we continued to wheel, and we eventually found this like. Um, or we came back to this kind of rocky field where mm-hmm. earlier in the day we had dropped our gear because we knew we were going to camp there. Yeah. And uh, so we came back there, and there was these cool rock outcroppings and stuff, and we ended up setting up camp, and they had this big, beautiful fire pit thing, and so we ended up, like, a bunch of people found wood, and we threw wood in, and most of us stayed up most hours of the night. I mean, I was probably nice. out there one, two, three in the morning with everybody else. Nice. And, uh, I know Chad was exhausted. He crashed a little earlier, but yeah. uh, it was just a, you know, it was a great night. We we're I was down there um, chatting that night with uh, um, uh, a couple of folks from Dana Corporation, um, nice. Randall and uh, Rachel. They were super cool. <laughs> um, and, you know, we were talking jeeps and stuff all night. It was just nice. And then Ian was out there again and. Trent, just everybody. It was, it was a good time, man. It was just, Sounds like we it, We had yeah. such a good time. It was That's awesome. Um, so in, it being our last camp night, it was super, super cold again. And, That's you right. know, And <laughs> we did three. So what we had done is three camp nights back to back to back. So okay. It was, it was something else. but Nice. So, yeah, um, we woke up that, that next morning. And, of course, we're now going into day six of Ultimate Adventure. And, you know, obviously, I'm trying to cliff notes as much of this as possible mm-hmm. and just tell you about different things that were going on. Um, that next day, we had a longer, quote-unquote, road day 
because we did see more pavement than we did the other day. We did do we did do dirt as well, mm-hmm. but we ended up uh, going into Yellowstone National Park. Nice, and um, I got to see something like so. I'm pretty sure that I drove through a portion of Yellowstone in the middle of the night, <laughs> like when I was trucking mm-hmm. ten years ago. I've never actually been to Yellowstone and like to be to Yellowstone. Yeah, so me neither. Uh, in one of the national parks I have and it's one of those iconic ones. You know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> we went to go see Old Faithful, of course. Gotta I remember go see those it. pictures, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, mind you, it's iconic, this and that. It was really neat to see, but I was a little disappointed. Oh. I don't know. In my mind, Old Faithful was supposed to be like this straight up geyser that was just like a laser. Yeah. Fountain. Isn't that just, what it is? It's more like it almost looks like mist. Oh, it comes out. And it, I mean, it, it comes up high, but yeah. and it was cool, but I don't know. And also, it's disappointing. <laughs> Old Faithful. I've always heard you can set your watch by. You can apparently yeah. not. Um, they have like an estimated window of time, like five minutes. Oh, when we got there, they're like, it's going to be approximately three or three p.m. It went off at two fifty eight. <laughs> Fortunately, we we're outside waiting for it. Yeah, but we're just like, Still. and then it goes for. Every bit of five minutes. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I thought maybe it was hmm. just like a pfft, and that was it. Yeah. But no. So I was disappointed. It was just not what I imagined. Yeah. But that was the first night that we ran into true, or first day that we ran into like true UA fans. Nice. This, uh, this dude came up uh, to Chad and myself. And he's like, oh, sweet Jeep. Because we were parked kind of off in the parking lot at Yellowstone there. And mm. he comes like, sweet Jeep, you know. And, oh, thank you, you know. And we get we get talking to him for a minute. He's like, he sees the banner on the windshield. He's like, oh, my God, you guys aren't with Ultimate Adventure, are you? And we're like, yeah. He's like, oh, my God, I've been reading about this for years. And blah, blah, blah. That is so awesome. He's asking us all these questions. And we're like, dude, you can't tell anyone that we're here right now. Yeah. You can tell people tomorrow, you know. And he's like, oh, you, that's fine. That's what I'll that's do. That's awesome. You know? So that was kind of cool. And that is cool. We saw um, <clears throat> bears and moose and elk and all sorts of stuff in Yellowstone just driving through. It was yeah. it was beautiful, beautiful. Any park. wolves? Uh, I did not see any wolves. Ah. No, no. The uh, I love wolves. Yeah, um, but yeah, it was it was definitely uh, it was really really cool. That sounds awesome. Um, at some point in that day, uh, we're going along, we're going uphill. This is when we started to have our uphill climbs a lot mm-hmm. of times. So we're doing these these pretty good elevations on pavement. And a lot of times those can tear up the rigs a lot yeah. faster than even off-road. Mm-hmm. Uh, Quigley split the fork in their transfer case. Ooh. And they lost all forward momentum Ooh. that way. So they ended up getting um, toe-strapped to the hotel that night mm-hmm. while they ordered tried to order some parts for it. Um, and then some of the other rigs, I don't know specifically who, but, um, in some cases I do, but some of the rigs were having overheating problems. Some of them were having yeah. transmission problems. Well, uh, hills, heat, big tires and gears. Yeah. I'll tell you what though. One of the things that, uh, I was, uh, pretty, uh, you know, I, I kind of my aha moment internally was, uh, there was no manual transmission problems, but a lot of the people with the automatics were overheating, uh-huh. puking trans fluid, uh, you know, especially at the highway speeds. Imagine that, an inferior product having problems. Speaking of, uh, <laughs> speaking of, um, you know, highway speeds, though, mm-hmm. I got talking to uh, Trent McGee, and, uh, you know, he had the scout there, and I says, uh, hey, uh, I said, you got the 2.8 Cummins in that thing. I said, but mm-hmm. you are scooting along pretty good. I'm like... What kind of gear ratio are you running? He's like, I'm running 488s. So I'm like, you're running 488s with a diesel? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, man. He goes, this thing will do 80 miles an hour all day long. Cummins is an official sponsor of UA. And nice. uh, that 28 program they're doing, which Chad is doing the repower program now, where yeah. you can actually send your rig to a shop to be oh, converted. Really? Yeah. Oh, nice. And he'll swap a 28 for, for you into it. How much does he charge for such a service? I believe it's $5,500 plus the cost of the parts. Uh, okay, then. So, um, <laughs> out of my budget, yeah. But you got to, he has to custom make it for everything. I mean, yeah, that's no, you know, no. you pull in a 1985 Dodge Omni, yeah, and he'll do the swap. So, I mean, I don't know if he would, sweet. but he, he says he will <laughs> on anything. We'll see, we'll see. But, uh, I want to find some weird um, Miata. yeah, there you I go. I want him to do an Miata. <laughs> you laugh, I'm serious. <laughs> so, um, we finally had a hotel night, mm-hmm. um, and 
That night we pulled into Cody, Wyoming. That poor drain system. For all those days of camping, all you guys and all the... Oh, yeah. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Ugh. Cody Hotel is super cool. You go into the lobby, and it is like leather armchairs and Ooh. woodwork, and it looks like something... It's a fairly new hotel. I, yeah. I think it's only like 15 years old, they said. Nice. But it looks like something straight out of like 1890. That I mean, it's awesome. super cool on the inside. Um, I mean, not not that old. I mean, it's not like wood floors or anything, but mm. it just it's very tastefully done, old school. Nice. If you're traveling through Wyoming and you want the kind of the Wyoming experience, I'd recommend mm. that Cody Hotel. I, it was pretty pricey, from what I understand. Chad mm. had picked up all the hotels, which was super cool of him. Yeah. But uh, you know, I it was just a neat place to stay. That's awesome. Real comfortable, real nice place. But uh, that was the first night in a hotel parking lot where we really had a thrash fest. I mean, people <laughs> that had broken everything the last couple of days, mm-hmm. the tools came out, the beers came out, um, you know, people were under all the rigs working yeah. on them. Uh, we didn't need any. Th- I mean, we needed, oh, that's right, we ran to a, uh, the tractor supply because we had busted our airline to fill up our tires. Mm. We had an ARB uh, <clears throat> uh, compressor. Those, those are cool. Yeah, it was very nice, yeah. uh, very quick and everything, but we had blown up the airline and it just exploded. We, yeah. had, a, we had a used shop airline with oh, us, so gotcha. it wasn't anything nice. new. Um, so we went to TSE, grabbed another airline and a fitting. But uh, a couple of the guys had gone into the O'Reilly's. Um, and this is a big shout out to the Cody, Wyoming O'Reilly's here. Uh, a couple of guys had gone in looking for parts, and the guys immediately were like, you guys are an ultimate adventure? Yeah. Oh, my God. And they, they were all fans. Nice. And they told us straight up, they're like, we will stay open as long as you need. Oh, wow. We will bring any parts you need down to the parking lot. Cool. So literally all the dudes from O'Reilly's showed up at the oh, wow. parking lot that night, and they were all hanging out and wrenching and that having beers awesome. with us. The one dude was driving a 19... 19- I think 29 Nash body with a DeSoto <clears throat> Hemi engine rat oh, rod wow. in it. Um, cool. Total car and truck guys. Yeah. And Cody, like, the word spread really fast. The local police were there. Uh, <laughs> there was just a bunch of locals there. They were all just coming down, take pictures of the rigs and nice. visit everybody. And a lot of them, like, the one, it was funny because I went into O'Reilly's. I was helping. Um, and Jeff and uh, Zayed, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, they're from uh, International uh, Parts, IH Parts America, International okay. Heart Parts America. They had a um, a beautiful, beautiful uh, Scout Two that mm. was fully modified, and they had a GM TBI system on it. But they were having a lot of problems with the. It was an older GM TBI system on the original 348 International motor, and they were having a lot of problems with vapor locking and stuff in the higher altitudes. Mm-hmm. And so um, Jeff's sons, I, I Zed Zaid, I I'm sorry, I could never pronounce his name right. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm gonna call you Z. <laughs> uh, I says, hey, because he's, oh, I need to get to O'Reilly's, and his dad was still under the under the scout. And I mm-hmm. says, hey man, I said I'll take you in the jeep. We'll head down to O'Reilly's. So we go into O'Reilly's to go get a fuel pump, mm-hmm. and um, we go up to the counter, and the one dude is like, you, he goes, hey. He goes, are you guys with Ultimate Adventure? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And he goes, you'll never believe who I just saw in here. And I'm like, who's that? And he goes, Ian Johnson. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, wow, yeah, that's that's weird that you saw him. <laughs> I'm thinking, he's been with us for five days. <laughs> like, yeah. He was just like, dude, that dude's my idol. And so I said, why don't you just come on down and meet him? I yeah. says, so, and he, so the guy's like, he's like, well, what should I do? What should I bring? What should I, I, says, I says, Ian's a bourbon guy. I says, you want to impress Ian? Bring a bottle of bourbon. He did. The guy nice. shows up with a bottle. I says, you don't really have, I, as I walked, I said, you don't really have to bring it. I said, we got plenty of everything. Man. Yeah. He goes, so he, no, no, no. So he came down with a bottle of bourbon. That is Ian awesome. And, uh, and a case of beer. And we nice. just, we hung out. And um, I think Warren that night bought a bunch of pizzas as well for the whole nice. the whole group. And yeah. uh, local pizzerias. I don't know what pizzeria it was, but they had like a chicken Alfredo pizza. It was super Ooh, good. Love that stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was really, really good. Nice. But, uh, yeah, we hung out there in Cody uh, for the night. We were out there in that parking lot for a long, long time, um, wrenching on rigs and getting stuff fixed. And mm-hmm. It was just, you know, getting transmissions refilled, automatics that had overheated. and Should it, have just fixed it right from the beginning. 
Yeah, manual swap. Yep. <laughs> well, that was it. Was funny. Um, these other guys, uh, and, I, and I don't recall their name. I, you know, so many people trying to recall everybody's names at the same oh, time. Yeah. There's two guys that had a um, uh, first gen Suzuki Sidekick, which is like the Geo Tracker, mm-hmm. and they had it on uh, one ton axles, oh, and wow. it was painted like 1990s lowrider <laughs> theme. So it was a multicolor all over the place, yeah. and those guys really like. Like fell into it too. They uh, they ended up wearing um, like bright colored uh, glasses and stuff. All <laughs> way. they just like did the whole '90s thing. That's awesome. Well, uh, that is so awesome, though. And, and and man, I'm I'm just drawing a blank right now. I know the one guy owns a shop that I've heard of, and they do custom work and stuff. But beautiful stuff. Yeah. Anyways, uh, he's like, yeah, and he had an he had a four three V six and an automatic in it, mm-hmm. and he was talking about us all weekend about figuring out some sort of quick draw adapter to go to a manual because he wants to put a real short manual because it's a short wheelbase vehicle. Yeah. He's like, well, what are my options? So we laid out some options, but I think he's probably going to be doing something awesome. like that. But. So one fix, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's one guy. I don't know that anybody else is going to be talked into it. Um, but there was, there was a number of manuals. You know, you had... Uh, uh, the whole trip, you had Stephen Watson from Off Road Design with mm-hmm. his uh, him and his son had their full size Chevy with an MV forty five hundred, a big nice. block four fifty four, nice. which probably got the worst mileage of the entire trip. <laughs> I, I believe think, it. I think he said he got about seven miles a gallon Ooh. or so. You know, Ooh. but uh, uh, super Ooh, cool rig. Uh, as far as I know, no problems. That's a, he's a UA crony, and yeah. that rig's been on multiple Ultimate Adventures. Nice. I mean, he's got that thing tiled in perfectly. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, we had, uh, you know, two of the scouts or no, one of the scouts was manual, two of them were automatics. Um, we had, uh, I'd say it was probably like 30, 70, about 30% of the rigs were manual, which is more than if you walk into a parking lot today. (laughs) So sadly, you know, uh, we had a number of MV 4,500s. We had a couple of the Tremex. I mean, it was, uh, those Tremex are seemingly more and more popular. At least I'm reading about or seeing more and more yeah. about them. I'd, I'd love to do them, but I, just, I don't have the budget. You know, it, I said I, I had that plan for mine if that trans problem happens again, and I'll do it, but, yeah, Tremec would be sweet. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was so impressed with the Tremec trans. It uh, And shout out there to Silver Sport Transmissions, who supplied uh, Chad with the, uh, the 4050, and I think it was... One of the, not the first, but one of the first ones installed as an aftermarket application in the U.S. Nice. Uh, it was right when they started that program, bringing them in. Yeah. And Chad developed the bell housings for them. And I'll nice. tell you what, at first I was ragging on Chad because I'm like, man, you're pulling out a six-speed to put a five-speed in. This seems <laughs> counterproductive there. Mm-hmm. But that five-speed was perfect in that thing. Nice. The only complaint we had for the entire layout of that jeep was the lack of power of the 36 even with 538 gears mm-hmm. overdrive was only useful on flat pavement maybe yeah. downhill uh the oh, three damn, si- i guess he has to upgrade yeah the 36 <laughs> either needs a, either needs a bigger motor or mm. the 36 needs maybe a turbocharger or supercharger or something like I that think an it's, engine swap and that's what he's thinking <laughs> as well too it was it, it did its job, yeah. and the nice thing is, is you could beat the living snot out of it without blowing up anything else. Yeah, that's nice too. You know, so yeah. keeping the the engine smaller than my old shop teacher John Wunsch from when I was uh, in. I know that name. He was the uh, Saint Clair Tech teacher for years and years and years. Yeah. Um, he uh, he always taught us when you know he, we weren't even in four by fours back then; it was cars, and he said, "Build your transmission." Drive shaft and rear axle to handle twice the twice the strength of your motor, and mm-hmm. you'll never have problems. He goes, it's the people that put the big motor in and leave all the puny stuff in it. Yeah, because that's makes the sense. one that's always breaking. So makes perfect sense. But um, <clears throat> yeah, we just it was it was a blast. You know, we had that kind of like second parking lot party there of the trip and yeah. hung out and visited with everybody, and uh, you know, and and that was that was it. We just you know. Um, you know, we we all eventually went to bed uh, in preparation of you know two more days of wheeling, day six and day seven. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think we should talk about day six right now, or should we wait till next week? Hmm, I, I kind of want to make them wait. I mean, I'm I'm kind of digging the idea of that. Not not sorry to screw you guys here, but. Uh... I mean, I don't want to wait another week, so you can tell me, and we'll tell them. Next oh, week. How okay, about that? All, right, all right, let's do that. <laughs> well, um, 
Yeah, we'll talk about the last two days of Ultimate Adventure and then the road home, um, which was, well... Wasn't that a Star Trek movie? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about all that. <laughs> we can and... talk about that, too. I mean, I'm okay. Exactly. <laughs> um, you know, I, I know we got a little bit of time here still, so... Um, by the time this podcast airs, I believe Wheels in the Woods will have been over. Yeah, should be. Okay. Should uh, be. So hopefully it was a great event. Yeah. Um, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll find out. But uh, Fing- Fingers crossed we do well. Um, maybe maybe what we should do is do the Wheels in the Woods episode and then do 6 and 7. Uh, we'll <laughs> see. We'll see. We'll play. Yeah, we'll, we'll play, play my, my ears. But, yeah. um, you know, basically, uh, I you know, I guess... Uh, I could talk briefly as to the the old excursion project. Mm-hmm. Um, I was still getting wheel bearing noise, swapped out the wheel bearing uh, with a brand new one, had the same noise, figured out it was a caliper. I told you about that. Mm. Put the old wheel bearing back in along with new calipers and rotors, cured the problem until today, but it managed to make it all the way to Montana and back. Nice. Uh, with only... The only thing is, is when I was at Chad's shop before I left, I knew mm-hmm. I was low in oil. Mm-hmm. So I went into his shop and I said, hey, where's some oil? And he goes, oh, there's a whole bunch on the shelf over there. And I grabbed a gallon and I dumped a gallon in it, Uh-oh. not really realizing I dumped a gallon of full synthetic in it. Now, Ooh. synthetic <laughs> oil is thinner than regular oil. And I've got, pretty, yeah. I've got pretty good oil leaks on the top. So I got <laughs> to smell an oil burn the entire way to Montana. Yeah, that happens. Windows down and I'm just like, oh, <clears throat> I put synthetic in this thing. But <laughs> yeah. um, the excursion made it there just fine. Uh, I was pretty stoked about that. And, um, you know, as for the museum, um, we are probably going to open back to the public uh, come, uh, you know, uh, after Wheels in the Woods here because Sweet. in Michigan, most of the restrictions are being lifted as of October 9th. Yay. So uh, we should be able to kind of open back to some full Yay. capacity stuff. But Normalness. You got Somewhere. anything else quickly you want to talk about, John? Not quickly. I'll save all my uh, Pegasus updates for another episode because that's still in progress. So all right. I'm... Um, you can throw them on 4x4 talk in the meantime. I done messed up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I know. They'll know next episode. All right, all right. <laughs> well, John, why don't, you, uh, why don't you let everybody know where to find us and stuff? Well, Keith's address, he's on River Road in uh, a local mm. town around here. Uh-huh. I'm out in Memphis. No, it's so. in a different country. Oh, oh right, right, right. The right, side right, of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, no, as always, a huge thank you to Mr. Andrew, our producer. Without him, none of this would be possible. So thank you for the awesome work you do for us, sir, and making us actually sound, you know, decent. I don't know how you do it, but it's got to be a challenge. Um, if you do want to hear any more or follow any more of our kind of behind-the-scenes stuff, make sure to check us out on Patreon. Uh, I was at patreon.com slash radio. Access those $2 a month. You can hear some bonus stuff. We are still updating all of that, so it's there's some back stuff right now. New stuff coming soon, of course. Uh, don't forget to follow along with us on Facebook and uh, 4x4 Talk, our page there. A couple quick questions to get you on. Post back and forth. Any questions you want to ask, contribute, or participate in anything, anything you want to hear, let us know. I, I think that's everything I got. So with that, thanks for listening, and have a good one, everybody.